again uh, time for another XX737 300 video today we are going to fly a category 3A Autoland approach in Frankfurt Germany we are here at 7000 feet uh, circling around while uh, waiting for our, our turn to come normally when an airport goes into low visibility conditions uh, the um, capacity is severely reduced uh, lots of aircraft have to wait uh, because obviously they need to keep a bigger distance from each other to uh, guarantee um, having the sensitive area clear as one plane comes into land the previous one has to be clear of the sensitive area to not disturb the ILS signal so uh, we're not going to really go over how to fly an ILS approach you guys know that and um, I'm going to concentrate on the specifics of the Autoland category 3A approach. The minimum that uh, the 737 Classic is capable of is 50 to 100, that's 50 feet decision height. And uh, we can set this up here on the um, decision height reference window. Uh, you only use this window for category 3 and category 2 low visibility approaches. You do not use it normally for regular category one or non-precision approaches because it references height above terrain and not above aerodrome elevation so um, you set it to 50 feet the plane will be over the threshold as you reach 50 feet so uh, there's no variation needed uh, when you do a catch two approach sometimes you have to set instead of the 100 uh, feet you have to set like 99 or, or uh, 102 or so it depends on the terrain just in front of the threshold but on a cat three approach you'll be able you will be over the threshold so that's invariably uh, 50 feet for the decision height set it up on both the captains and the fo's uh, window here now the 200 meters RVR is a limit that enables you to see the lights before you touch down. That's important because the 737 cannot steer the rudder or the nose gear with the autopilot. So the captain has to roll out the plane manually and you cannot roll out the plane if you don't uh, see the runway. So uh, just as you cross the threshold at 50 feet, you need to ascertain that you can see the runway and then uh, you can start the approach. Now. Let's uh, go inbound to Metro at this point, which is the initial approach fix. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's go to the um, second one after that. Here we go, a little more straight in. And uh, then we can start our approach. And of course, we're going to descend to 4,000 feet, which is the, or 5,000 feet, which is the uh, initial altitude for this approach. And um, you can confirm that here on our leg sequence, uh, knee bump at 5,000, and then we go down to the runway. Now, um, when you do a category three approach, it's important to see something as you come up on the runway. So we're using the highest flap setting 40. That gives us the best over the nose visibility because pitch will be lower. So we have Laps 40 v ref 122 and we'll set our speed box usually i set two plastic bucks for v ref when i do a flaps 40 approach that reminds me that i picked flaps 40 as the landing flap setting and of course the second buck goes to the maneuvering speed which is 15 knots above that so 137 approximately now when you do an auto land approach oh i forgot to click enough so sorry plane um when you do an, uh, an auto land approach, an approach on the autopilot, you do not need to add any speed for crosswind or for gusts. Boeing says our auto throttle is so good, it can cope with that without the pilot intervening. And uh, speaking of crosswind, the limit, of course, for a Cat 3 approach is 10 knots, and we only have about 5 knots from the south. I'm going to go over the approach checklist real quick. And... Um, Recall was checked, cabin control is set, auto brake, oops, forgot that. We'll go to two, which is the normal setting. Speed box, 122, 137, and the altimeter is standard today, 1013 at 5700. The FO has the same thing. So now we have set everything up. And uh, there's one important thing to remember when you do an auto land approach is you need to set 
as always the inbound cores and of course you need to set it up on both sides because you will need both sides uh, the VHF 1 and the VHF 2 tuned to the ILS otherwise you won't be able to engage uh, both autopilots and that is a prerequisite to um, flying this approach so we're going to uh, fly heading now and ADC says uh, cleared ILS Zulu category 3 approach for runway 25 right and we can clear this warning and we're also going to turn on the engine anti-ice because it's cold this morning and uh, there we go you can see it's only plus 7.7 .7 total air temperature we might pick up some inlet icing if we don't pay attention so about uh, six miles to go to Nibab and uh, we've set everything up we confirm glide slope is arm view are lock as well and um, normally you would wait with setting the second ILS uh, frequency until uh, you have certain that you are on the correct localizer and that the DME distance is correct for the glide slope uh, now ILS 25 right in front would, does have a, a DME, so um, we have confirmed the airplane position. We're under radar contact, so we'll just do this now. Now both of these are set, and uh, if you really want to play it safe, you can check the Morse identifier to make sure that you have set the correct, or you need to do it that you have set the correct uh, ILS. Now we are on glide. Well, on the localizer, I'm going to also move the heading bug to the front and I'll engage the second autopilot. And this is the first time that things are going right. If both of these autopilots can be engaged at the second time, that means that uh, you are set up for a dual channel auto land approach. And let's slow down. One thing you do not want to rush when you do uh, low visibility approach or one thing that you don't want to do is rush when you do the low vis approach take things slow uh, you don't do this every day so you don't want to come in hot and high and we're going to flaps five and you can see the glide slope is coming up 5,000 feet about uh, 13 miles or so so this is the correct glide slope and we can follow it with confidence now one or another special thing about doing a dual channel approach is that you will be able to use the autopilot to do a go around if you have to the autopilot will fly the go around for you um, right now we're still on one channel uh, there will be a self test in a little bit and once that self test is completed you will see the scales flash and then you will see the flare arm come up in white which is also a prerequisite for doing the approach safely so 5,000 feet will stay up here for the missed approach and um, the plane has captured the glide slope and we are following it down of course there's nothing to see uh, picking up a little bit of uh, vortices here at the flaps it's a uh, humid and um, those are part of the particle effects that we added in one of the recent updates. Now, another thing that you will notice is as you cross 400 feet radar altitude, the trim will start running continuously for a little bit. And this is introducing a deliberate mist trim. The plane will trim itself nose up and you can see the yoke move forward at that time as the autopilot pushes against this mist trim and this is an added safety feature as you uh, get close to the ground uh, Boeing wants the plane to pitch up if anything happens like autopilots disconnect inadvertently or due to some limit uh, not being met and uh, that's why this mist trim is introduced and that's also why it's not a great idea to fly with two autopilots if you intend to do a manual landing because the pilot would be surprised that he has to push the nose down to keep it going uh, towards the runway now um, we have checked that there's low visibility procedures in progress uh, with the tower that's also important and he just confirmed that uh, the rvrs are above 200 feet so we can actually commence this approach uh, once we're past the outer marker or past 1000 feet then uh, we just do the look and see principle as we get close to the ground 
and see if we can spot the lights of the approach light system of the runway that's checked before uh, we say either continue at 50 feet or do the missed approach if we cannot see the runway or if there are other things wrong like a bad lineup or so now the plane complains because the <coughs> the anti ice is still on above 10 degrees but we'll just leave it running we're going to slow down now and as we slow down the temperature will drop again so we'll go to our vref now flaps 15 and we had 122 plus 5, that is 127. You do need to add the 5 knots, that's not what I was talking about, but you don't need to add any uh, additional speed for uh, uh, wind or for gust factor. Boeing says that is not needed. And of course, when you do category 3 approaches, usually go to flaps 25, usually the wind is not very uh, strong because strong wind and fog, that just does not match up. And now as we approach 140 knots, we go to flaps 40 all the way. We are on the speed brake. Now we're waiting for the self-test to go. Here it goes. It's starting to flash the scales. And when it's completed, the flare arm is shown in white. Now we do the final checklist. Start switches, continuous, speed brake, arm, green light, gear down three green flaps 40 green light we are clear to land now we just need to see the autopilot do its thing and uh, one thing as i mentioned already the plane is unable to steer itself nuisance warning cancel it again steer itself on the ground so the captain needs to disengage the autopilot uh, well if he doesn't no big deal because the plane will try to you know maintain the runway 1000 is checked with the ailerons of course that is not effective when it's on the ground but it's a good practice to disconnect the autopilot uh, before the plane starts trimming and, and doing all sorts of stuff and uh, to just steer with your rudder pedals to stay on the runway and of course you need to deploy the reversers manually now we're coming up at 700 feet over the terrain i'm moving into my seat position and normally i move up a little bit the first officer is watching everything on the e80i and in the plane and the captain needs to look outside to see if he can spot the lights and that's what we're going to do now in a second coming up on 400 feet uh, there's no 500 call out when there's an ils frequency tuned that's normal now 400 feet and now let's watch the yoke there's the trim Yoke is moving forward as the plane pushes the nose down against the mist trim. And we're going to move our view up and hope to spot the lights. And there you can see them. Pretty faint, but they're clearly coming into view. There's a crossbar. Hundred above continue and there's 30, flare 20, 10. and touchdown autopilot off steer towards the center line it's normal to not always be perfectly on the center line reverse as long as you're with between the approach lights with the cockpit especially with a crosswind from the left like today then that's normal and the auto brake is working to slow our plane down reverse idle and manual brakes and you do want to leave the runway only on taxiways with color-coded center lights like this one here and the tower is also expecting you to call them once you are clear of the color-coded lights and that means that you are clear of the sensitive area and they can clear the next plate in. So here we are. We're clear of the color coded center line lights and uh, the next plane can actually land. Well, this is uh, the way it's uh, supposed to be done. Nothing really big about it. Just uh, don't forget to turn on both autopilots. You need to make sure that both VHF NAV receivers are set towards the ILS 
also make sure that both front courses are set. Those are the common pitfalls that people forget, uh, even in the real plane. And of course, then when you try to engage the second autopilot, things don't work and then things go downhill from that point pretty quick. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for more to come.